You can look upon somebody and get a general tale of who they are. That's what that's talking about. You can generally judge a book by its cover. What? You can generally judge a book by its cover. I know Esau, the so-called white man soldier, and he don't judge a book by its cover. Of course, we're not telling you to condemn somebody by how they look, but you can't be able to judge somebody by how they look. You can be able to tell things about them that's by right. how they look. Right. Read. And one that have understanding by his countenance. And one that has understanding by his countenance. You can understand if a sister has understanding if she come out here dressed modestly. Right. Now, what is that understanding? She understands that she show up out here half naked, that every man gonna be looking at her. Right. Every wicked man gonna be looking at her. Right. That every man gonna try to look into her ass, she bending over. See. Or bending down and seeing her breast. That's that understanding. She understands the nature of a man. Right. If I go outside and I look like this, this is the attention that's gonna go on me. But if I go outside and I look like this, this is how they gonna show me respect. Bring it out. Read that again. And one that have understanding by his countenance. And one that has understanding by his countenance. Your countenance is your appearance. Right. Right? You can tell a young man has understanding if he's not out here hand sagging. Right. With a do-rag on. Right. With his shirt off and full of tattoos. Right. He can come out here, he can have all those things, right? Say he got pants, but he put a belt on so he's not sagging. Say he has tattoos. But he has a shirt on that covers up his tattoos. Say he has a bandana, but he takes it off and puts a hat on instead. See? That's two completely different images. See? That's how you know that man has understanding by his countenance. Right. You're not going to go outside looking like a suspect. Right. If you're a young African American male. If you're a child of God according to the Bible. You're not going to come out the house looking like a whore. That's right. And expect to be treated like a lady. Bring it out. You must be out your damn mind. That's right. Who the hell going to treat? Something that look like garbage, uh, precious. If every man like he done bend up inside you, who the hell gonna get on one knee in this world and bow down to you? Now, that's a lot of simps out here, so I'm, I'm sure you can find somebody, right? But I'm talking righteous man. Who the hell gonna take a whore for a wife? Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of a heart. With the attire of a harlot and the what a heart? And subtle of heart. That's talking about your mind, subtile mind, a subtle mind. I Meaning, guess what? This woman right here in the Bible, she knew if I just like this, I'm going to try to be a man. She knew that. And just like she knows that, you know that. Because what do you do when you step out the house? You look right in that mirror and you do a side profile. Right. Is it sitting the way I want it to sit? How you doing, my young sister? Go ahead and get you a fight. And if you like what you hear, come on up. We teach that the so-called black, Hispanic Native Americans are God's chosen people. That's right. We're teaching our people to have dignity for themselves. Right. Respect for themselves. To uplift themselves. Right. Come out of this lower state that we're in. My sister, right now you are in the tire of a man right now, right? I know you ain't noticed, but a woman should not be wearing shorts. A woman should not be wearing pants. A man should not be wearing a skirt. A man should not be wearing a dress. Right. Give me that in Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Because we're just hitting on a few things of your countenance. That you shall be known of understanding by your countenance. Right. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. A woman should not be wearing pants. A woman should not be wearing shorts. Right. That is an attire to a man. Right. And guess what? And you wearing that, now I can see your hips. I can see your curves. Why? Because now you wear form-fitting clothing and showing off your body. Bring it out. But what about the man? Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither should a man be wearing a skirt, wearing a dress. Right. A man should not be wearing feminine clothes. Right. That's so my sister, you got to come out those pants and put a modest skirt on, right. put a modest dress on. I know you never heard that before. No, that's why I can tell how you're smiling. Nobody ever told you that. You're not an ugly sister, but in your attire, you attract the wrong attention that way. Right. I shouldn't be able to see your, your thighs, your butt. That should only be reserved for your husband. Right. No other man should better look upon your nakedness right. and see you, except that man that marries you. Right. That man that makes some vows to you. That's and right. the man that you make those vows to, right. in sickness and health, right. in rich or poor, in life and death. Right. Those are vows of marriage. That's an honorable thing. Right. But nowadays, the media, Cardi B, Beyonce, uh, who else we got? Uh, spice, I Spice, that's the new Hot Spice. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Megan Thee Stallion, they out here teaching our sisters, have a hot girl summer, be a whore, 
for your young age and hopefully a man to marry you. Right. What man wants to marry a woman that's been ran through? Right. What man wants to marry a woman with three or four kids with three or four different baby daddies? Well, you know. What man wants to do that? You must cherish yourself. Right. You must have a care for yourself. You must learn to serve the Lord to carry yourself and keep the commandments. Right. But finish, uh, finish that up for me. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. For all that do so it is abomination. Give me Zephaniah 1 and 8. And what happens when you're in abomination before the Lord your God? What happens when you dress in that evil attire? Because it's evil, I know. You ain't heard that before. That a woman wearing pants is evil. That a woman wearing shirt, uh, shorts is evil. Bring it up. That a man in a skirt is evil. Jeez. That a man wearing panties is evil. That's an evil thing. What? Read that. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. Bring it up. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice is when he comes back to kill the nation of Israel. Right. To kill his own children, his own babies. Read. That I will punish the princess and the king's children. There you go. He will punish his children. He's the king. He's going to punish his children. Read on. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And then it said all. Uh-oh. So we ain't just dealing with the nation of Israel now. We're dealing with the whole world. Right. He said what? And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So anybody, whether you the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, anybody, right. so-called Arabians, right. so-called West Indians, right. so-called white men, right. if anybody is dressed in strange apparel, when Christ come back, he's going to do what? Read on. And verse 9, and the same day also would I punish all those that leap on the threshold. So we talking about punishment. So when you read above, it says it's going to punish all those in strange apparel. The king's children, the strangers, everybody's going to be destroyed. All right? What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Family.